Hi everybody, it's Wendy from the Lakeshore Museum Center. Um, this is just a quick little intro to a bonus video we had from our Settler Science. Um, as you can see, I'm actually back in the office and we are working on getting the Lakeshore Museum Center ready to reopen to the public. Um, so I'm so sorry that this little bonus episode is a little bit late. Um, I don't think that people are having as hard of a time getting yeast, but just enjoy and be adventurous in the kitchen. So find out how we replicated yeast at our house. As I said in the introduction, we really went down a rabbit hole with our last experiment on yeast capture. What we did is we used raisins and potatoes to capture wild yeast in my kitchen. And it did work. It worked really well. However, once we had that yeast, in order to keep it viable, we had to turn it into sourdough starter, uh, which is fine and works, but it does take some care because those yeast colonies in the starter are alive. So you do have to feed them and kind of maintain them. So that's what makes granulated yeast that we get from the store so attractive um, and convenient. So one of the questions that kind of came out of that is, you know, was there an answer or for convenience um, like what we had in the late 1800s? And there were some things. So here we're looking at a potato yeast recipe and it's for replicating yeast. Um, you use potatoes, you boil them, you add salt, sugar, cornmeal, let it ferment, you then add more cornmeal, and after a few days of drying, voila, you've got some yeast cakes that should be storable in an airtight container. Now, the first step was to boil and mash potatoes. Now, here's where I made a little bit of a mistake. In the yeast capture recipe, you leave the peels on because that's often where wild yeast are in your kitchen. However, don't do that with these because the potato peel will end up in your yeast cakes and then end up in your bread. Now, cornmeal here was a very important ingredient. I made a half a recipe. I had a pound of cornmeal in my kitchen and it was not enough. Now, the reason it wasn't enough is because initially you're gonna mix cornmeal with your potatoes and water and salt, yeast and sugar, leave it to ferment on your counter and then look what happened to mine overnight. Clearly the yeast were alive and eating. At this point, you add more cornmeal um, until you get kind of a dry and crumbly dough, but I didn't have enough. You're supposed to put this dry crumbly dough into tins or to form into cakes and allow them to dry out completely so that you can store them in an airtight container and they won't get moldy. But again, even a pound of cornmeal wasn't enough. Um, now, I ended up trying to flip mine out here, as you can see, on a parchment lined cookie sheet to try to get more of that moisture out. Um, and it was not a pleasant experience. It did stink a little in the kitchen while these things were drying out because they had been fermenting, right? But eventually they did dry out most of the way and we just decided that enough was enough. I did make bread right away with some of the yeast cakes that had been out. It took about four days for them to dry out. To wake up the yeast, I went ahead and put a cake into warm water, as you see here, and let it sit, just like you would prove yeast for making bread normally. And it worked. I was really surprised, you guys. I'm going to be honest. I thought that this one was going to be a fail based on the smell of my kitchen, but it completely worked. Now, when you're working with wild yeast or yeast like this, you really don't know how much yeast is in those cakes, so be patient. It sometimes can take a little longer for your bread dough to rise. Here you can see the first rise of our loaf of bread, and then in just a second, you'll see the second rise in the pan. Uh, so this was ready to go in the oven, and our final product is right here. It turned out really, really well. Now, what didn't turn out so well were the yeast cakes in the airtight container. Um, I was right in my hypothesis that they were a little too too damp and you can see here that mold grew on them. Now I did have a fail safe mechanism in place. I did put a few into my freezer just to test and see what would happen. So we're going to test those out. I'm pretty confident that they will work since we know that you can freeze bread dough and pull it out later and kind of wake it back up. So I hope that you enjoyed this little bonus episode about replicating the yeast that you could capture in your kitchen. So have a wonderful, wonderful week and we hope to see you in the museum soon.